so the, the seven nine hand this is the, you'll you'll notice that I, my cursor is sort of deliberating over this one <laughs> i have to do like would you say this would you say this is a show this is probably borderline profitable show, but I wouldn't take it because anytime I'm thinking I'm shoving, I'm, I'm asking myself, like, what's the upside versus the downside? Now, the upside here is we win 2.3 bigs and we go from like 31.3 to 33.6, which is nice, mm. but, you know, not brilliant. Uh, the downside is we're going to be in really bad shape if we're called. Uh, mm. I think this is just a great spot to limp. Right. Okay. Uh, like, that's, that's something I don't even do in satellites anymore, really. Uh, yeah, I pretty much limp. I, I limp a super wide range. So if I had aces here, I would limp as well. Um, yeah, I limp my entire range. And because I do that, then I get to play hands like this, uh, mm. which I don't think are great shoves. Um, and actually, the limp stab uh, play is really good in satellites because... Yeah. I have started to notice that. Yeah. Yeah, people like the ice, like most of the time they're checking because they don't have a hand that's strong enough to raise. Uh, if they're the kind of guy who, who who always pounces on limps, well then you're going to be protected by the stronger hands in your range. That's fine too. If they're going to check behind two times out of three, they're going to miss the flop and they're going to fall to your one big blind bet. Mm -hmm. So it's um, yeah, it's 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 kind of a secret weapon in these spots. And I, I, I know I folded in this one because I, I did wonder about it afterwards. So I did actually run it in... Uh, in as a shove. And this is as a shove. Nice. It's a 9-7 off. But yeah, this, is, this is me pondering whether to shove. On. Yeah, so you can see it is actually borderline. Um, he pr What's his calling range supposed to be? Um, I don't know because this is a screenshot. Oh, it's a thing. screenshot, yeah. Like, I think probably people don't call wide enough in these spots. Right. Um, so it, that might push it towards being borderline profitable. But as you can see, either way, it's going to be borderline anyways, which is why I don't like it. Like, yeah. even if this was plus 0 0.05, I wouldn't take it because shoving effectively 22 big blinds to win 120th of a big blind um, is not great satellite strategy. In a bigger buy-in satellite would you ever lean towards shoving for kind of metagame purposes to if, if if this was one of the best satellite players in the world i would shove uh for sure because i'd know they they would they would know how tight their calling range has to be yeah. um and uh i think they would actually overfold in those spots for sure um mm. I did let it go because I was. Uh, but if you ever see me uh, do this on a screen, it's because I'm thinking about it and I want to memorize uh, the, the exact same situation here. Like I know my, I, I know my sort of twenty big line shoving ranges quite well, and this was another really really close one for me. Yeah. Like obviously we've um, well we can pick up more of a pot than in the uh, the previous example. But again, what's your, what's your line with this hand and what's your shoving range with this hand? Yeah, I don't shove this hand for sure. Uh... This, I mean, this is a hand I want to play. So the question is, how do I play it? I don't think it works great as a shove because even though we can win two point three, it's still in the context of the tournament. Losing twenty five big blinds or twenty four point four big blinds is, if the big blind wakes up with something, is pretty disastrous. Winning two point three bigs is nice, but not major. Um, so I would rule out the shove. We so that 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 leaves either limp or raise. Um, this is actually a pretty good hand to limp uh, because yeah. it flop it flops very well um, mm -hmm. and it, it and it, and it doesn't it plays pretty well multi way so letting the small blind is, is in is not a factor like if we had a hand like a seven off I, I'm more likely to raise that because I don't want it to go three way but with mm -hmm. queen eight suited I don't mind going three way when I'm in position against two fairly weak ranges. Um, so yeah, I think I think limping would be my preferred option here. Generally, the way I would split my range is I would I would shove the hands that are clearly profitable to shove. Um, I would raise hands I want to play that I don't want to shove that have a blocker, um, but don't right. flop particularly well, particularly multi-way. And then I would limp some really strong hands uh, like aces, like where I'm actually looking for action and um hands like this that play well multi-way but don't have great blockers and then and then this is all right now because we've got like 24 big blinds affected so there is still an element of playing this you, you're not yeah this this is this is exactly the stack depth at which limping becomes pretty much the the default with, with most of your range because if you raise they have a very wide range of profitable reshoves but if you limp yeah. 
you know, if you if you raise the big blind has there's going to be 4.3 big blinds out there, which is exactly almost exactly 20% of his stack, which is the sweet spot for the shove. Um, he picks up 20% of his stack if he shoves and you fold. So he's going to have a, a very wide range of 20% is actually the the sort of um, the the inflection point for that. But if you length, there's only going to be 3.3 big blinds out there. So he's only going to be picking up about 15%. So suddenly his shoving range gets a lot less, uh, gets a lot tighter, has to get a lot tighter. And he has some tricky decisions with, with lots of his range where he has a hand which he doesn't want to shove, but but it's a, it's stronger than your limping range. So he thinks maybe he should raise it for uh, for value. Um, and then a hand at Queen Eight suited plays fine as a as a limp call um, because yeah. you're going to be in position. Just uh, just because I just to kind of put the point once again, Queen Eight suited was right on the line. Literally show. right on the line. Yeah, like I don't take those close spots when they're show when they're shoves because you're shoving a lot to to, to win very little. Um, yeah. Like even again, even if that was like plus zero point zero five, I wouldn't take it because you're shoving twenty four bigs effectively to win one twentieth of a big. Queen Jack I'm, suited. I'm, I'm pondering Jack Queen suited. Um, yeah, this is like we're we're one seed earlier now. That makes a fairly significant difference. Um, imagine if we ran this, we would still find it profitable. Look how we just looking at the stacks behind. Yes, it is borderline. Yeah, yeah. that's what I felt. Uh, yeah, uh, for the, for that, given the situation, I mean, we're 10 or 14, so like we're, we still do have to play, so we don't want to be passing too many profitable spots, but this is only making 0.001, um, so I think the fold is fine there. Do, do, do you, like, I, I, one of the reason why I don't, I, I shove or I fold there. And I, I don't consider playing it. It's because I, I don't think I'm going to know particularly as a recreational player myself. I'm not sure how I'm going to play that post flop. I mean, would you, um, the great Daro Kini, uh, <laughs> would you ever raise there? Uh, oh yeah, for sure. And I, and I, and I would limp sometimes as well, just to mix it up. Um, yeah. Sometimes when I, I, again, like when I don't have these hands that I don't feel great about shoving, but I do want to play them. If I feel I'll play better than my opponent's post flop, then I'll do something else like limp or or raise them. This this hand is probably a better. Oh, sorry, that that hand is off screen now. But Queen Jack is probably a better limp because um, we're going to fold it to a to a raise. If we if we sorry if we open it, we're folding it to a three bet. We don't have a blocker, so we're not making it. It's no less likely than a random hand that we are going to get three bet. And given that we are folding it, um, it also plays very well multi-way and it plays very well against a wide range like it's great for us if the big blind has like queen seven off which he was gonna fold to the min raise but he calls and then he hits his queen uh and can't get away um so yeah i think i think i would usually limp that hand actually so i, I as we probably guessed by now i if I'm not shoving it, I'm, I'm not playing it. That's so a fine I, adjustment. If you if you if you don't feel confident in your post flop play, uh, it's it's incredibly pragmatic and it's almost certainly the best strategy adjustment you can make is just to switch to a shove or fold mode. I mean, in a multi-table tournament, um, short-handed, I absolutely I love defending with king five yeah. suited. You can, uh, you can fold yeah, I mean, I, w I would definitely defend this, but again, it depends on on feeling. I I can play very well post flop. Um, yeah, I mean, at this point, there's we're one player away from the final table. Um, I don't particularly want to call and then, you know, hit a flush draw and then think about having to call again on the. Yeah, that's the, this is the problem. We are going to have to. Uh, yeah, and, and in fact, we're at, we're at, we're at the spot now where ICM is huge, and because he covers us, uh, that's going to affect his post flop as well. Um, this is a spot now where we should we should be stalling already, incidentally, since since the final table bubble. Yeah. The quicker we get to final table, the better for us with our stack. So, so just just out of interest, I insta I insta folded the ace four or five there. Um, a couple of reasons, but first of all, this Mike Stock player has shown himself to call quite wide. Um, if I had ace four or ace five suited, I would have almost certainly shoved over the top of him. But I actually just don't think I have that much fold equity. Is that? Yeah, if, if uh, he's, he's open to three and a half x, so he'd probably have no fold equity. Uh, if 
often guys raise the 3.5x with a hand just to make it clear that they're not folding. Yes. Um, yeah. um, so that's kind of what I was, that's yeah. kind of what I see that. Um, yeah. More so in satellite yeah. and, in, and in like a final table situations and stuff like that. Yeah. I, uh, I actually, now this is a, an interesting one. I, uh, I'm quite embarrassed because I don't know how to adjust ICI, ICMizer to change the villain's calling range, but I, uh, this was a hand where I, I queen 10 off, I would have shoved in a normal situation, especially five-handed, but I folded just because I felt like this uh, this guy was looking me up too wide. Yeah, I, I'm actually looking at the shoving range if I see a missing the factor and queen 10 off is just is just below the line. Uh, mm -hmm. We can shove queen jack off and we can shove jack 10 off. Jack 10 off is a better shove. Um, it, it's one of those spots where like it's a fine shove from button and it's a fine shove obviously from the small blind, but the farther we get away from the button, the more it drops off. Um, like at this stack that if we're on the button, uh, well actually queen 10 off is still, is still only bottom of the, of the range. So it's not a, it's, it's not an amazing shove at any, any spot. If we're, if we, if we think we're up against somebody who calls too much, then we're definitely not shoving this hand. Yeah. Yeah. Good. And I was, I was kind of pleased that it was, yeah. it was and it's, it was, and it's borderline unprofitable as you can see, even if the calling range is correct. That way. And then, obviously, you've never actually watched me play a satellite before. So my only question, um, now that you know the book was about six months ago that we released it, is like, like do you have any um, uh, useful critiques of my game going forward? Like, I clearly I was playing like a shovel fold bot for the most part, which I've I've probably overly embraced as a solid strategy. I suspect. I need to put a little bit more of creativity in my game. Yeah, have more. I think that's a good that's a good adjustment if you are if you feel outskilled after the flop. Now, I don't think you would necessarily be outskilled from what I've seen of these players. Um, mm -hmm. So, yeah, I would I would say going forward, try and expand your strategy out of just push fold. Now, any like fairly inexperienced recreational players watching, I think basically do as Barry has done in this video. It's a very good adjustment while you're learning the game or while you're improving your post-flop play. But f where Barry is now, I would say you can definitely play. Um, I, think you, I think you won't be outskilled post-flop. So what I would do is I would start incorporating more limping and raising into your game, um, particularly in late position. So that means you don't have to fold hands like queen eight suited on the button anymore. And it also means that when you have ace king suited, you can try and induce action rather than just shove and, um, you know, be slightly, sl slightly happy, but not thrilled when they both fold. Um, when you make that adjustment, often you'll find in the short term that your results will actually get worse because first of all, you're introducing an, an additional element of variance. And secondly, It'll take you a while to get used to dealing, you know, to knowing what to do when you've limped queen eight suited on the button and the flop comes ace eight deuce or mm -hmm. the flop comes king queen four uh, or you flop a flush draw or something like that. So it'll take a while for your post flop game to kind of improve uh, and work out, work, come up to the standard that it needs to be. You will also maybe feel that you're making you're giving yourself more difficult decisions and making it more difficult on yourself. But, but you know, the, the goal of poker is to play um, as profitably as you can, not to, not to just avoid difficult decisions. Um, mm -hmm. And in the long term, any improvements you can make in your post flop play in both normal satellite in, in normal satellites or sorry, in satellites will trans will also translate into uh, normal tournaments. And it's actually very important to be able to play, sort of 20 big blinds when I see him as a factor uh, to, to play post up well. So the practice that you get in satellites will stand you in normal tournaments as well. Yeah, I mean, while I've got you here, like I, I, I know for a fact um, my biggest overall leak is post-flop play 20 to 30 big blinds. Um, 
you know, spots where you, I start telling myself, ah, I may as well shove this because I don't want to bet and then get then hit a flop and then have to fold and stuff like that. Um, you know, roughly speaking, like what, what would you say is a good battle plan for someone wanting to improve in those spots? And I'm thinking like, obviously getting better players to review my hands is I'd say one of the single best ways to do that. That's a big so, way. That's a big one too. I mean, you, you can also go the solver route and just uh, like run a lot of spots in solvers and see, see, see the way you're supposed to play. Uh, the, the, the one overarching um, thing, uh, principle I, I guess I could give you at that sort of stack depth is that um, equity, equity denial becomes more important. It's more, it's more important to win the pot. So, you know, when you flop top pair, when you when you're two hundred big blinds deep, you're never going to want to get it in with like a weakish top pair. Like let's say you've raised queen eight suited on the button and the flop has come queen ten four. Yeah. But 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 in a wide range versus wide range situation, you can very happily get that in on the flop. Uh, mm. Similarly, if you've if you've defended that type of hand and you flopped a pair, you just check raise all in or check raise commit. Um, that's that's going to be fine. So. In a sense, your your um, decisions become easier because it becomes more important to, to deny equity to opponents. So, mm. and you know, if you're if you're beaten, you're going bust anyway, uh, yeah. because you know, you, if if you flop a weak top pair out of position, if the guy has you beaten, he's betting all three streets and getting you in by the river. Uh, mm. And at the same time, you can't be folding top pair in the heads of pot. So. Uh, yeah, the more practice you get, the more you'll start to realize these principles. I mean, like a really good rule of thumb, which I can't remember who taught me this early on, but um, in a wide range situation, like blind versus blind or blind versus button, top pair is good enough to, to go all three streets with, middle pair is good enough to go two streets with, and bottom pair is good enough to usually just go one street with it. Even if you, even if you just stick to that as a general principle, I think um, mm. that will... Uh, like it's it doesn't apply in all cases. I mean, I'm not I'm not saying that like eight deuce on a ten nine eight board is 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 always a call or ten deuce is good enough to go three streets on that board. But as a general principle on like fairly normal boards, that's that's a good way to think about it. I like, I like that heuristic as well. No, no, no. Of course, you could if you went if you got top pair on the first street, you you bang get called, and then the turn brings something that makes your hand not top pair anymore you know you can potentially adjust and just yeah you can always adjust obviously uh but but again like because equity and all becomes important like when we're when we're super deep we might not want to stack off with ace 10 on a 10 high board that has lots of draws on it but on a but when we're shallow we just check raise and try and get it in now um uh, and then we don't have to worry about what happens if a queen or a king comes uh on the next street um um so yeah, it's just pl play your made hands more aggressively um, when you're when you're relatively shallow post flop. Okay. Well, uh, maybe the next video will be uh, why the hell did you limp that Barry as the title? <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> go forward. But, um, no, this is.